have something scheduled to 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 go along with, and then all of a sudden just bag out like that. I'm looking forward to whooping him. But I guess whoever wins out that one, I'm going to whoop him and whoever else. I'm looking to unify the division. And that's my main goal and my mission. Whoever steps in that ring is going to get punished. I guarantee you that. You know, anything I said in this sport that I promise, I, I done went through with. You know, I fulfilled my promises. And I promise you guys that I will, will unify the division, be the first American. Since 1999, I think it was Lennox Lewis. So I want to make history on that. And I'm, I'm going to bring him back no matter who has it. Mr. Wilder, but on box record, the name's already out there. It says Arthur Spielko. That's that. I don't know who put that up. That's like Wikipedia having people stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're, they're still breathing. Uh, I don't know who put that up because I can tell you that that is that is. That's not. That's not. That's not true. That's you mentioned yeah. Klitschko. I mean, that might be one of the, the balls that was bouncing around, but that's not true. You mentioned Klitschko Curry. Uh, what was your impression of the fight, if you saw it? Oh, you're talking about the, the most boring heavyweight <laughs> fight in history? That one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you um, never saw John Ruiz fight. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, I think that fight was what, what the, uh, I consider it as uh, 107, Dancing with the Stars. You know, that's one of those series of Dancing with the Stars. You know, when you get a champion that's been ruling the, the division for a decade and, and, and one of the rounds, he only throws two punches, you know, it's, it's it, it's gonna be a bad night, you know. But um, like I've been saying, I think I think Klitschko was fighting two people. Not only was he fighting Fury, but he was fighting an old man called Father Time as well too. And I think Father Time is definitely knocking at his door. It was time in that fight where his mind wanted to throw punches, but his body wasn't really active. And uh, in this sport, people don't understand. It's a brutal sport, you know. You you put so much wear and tear on your body, especially in camp. Camp is the worst. That's the hard part, you know. Coming into fights, that should be the easier the easier part about boxing, but um, you know, all these years you put so much wear and tear and he's getting older. So as you get older, your body don't react to the things that that it does when, when you're younger. You don't recover faster and different things like that. And I think I think Father Time is, is at his door. Do you think this guy should retire then if he can't perform at that level? I mean, I, you know, he feel as a fighter, you know, as a fighter, we all gonna feel we got one more fight in us. Um, we have seen many fighters that, you know, felt like they should retire, but then they come back and come back on top. So, you know, um, maybe we should see him. He said he's exercising his rematch clause, which I, I feel I feel he, he'll, he'll lose that one too. But, um, we, we you know, only only the future can tell, you know. I may see try one more time. Maybe he was just an off night. Sometimes you get off night sometimes. But uh, I think uh, after he exercises the clause and see what his performance is and if it's the same, I think he should retire before he make up. Yeah, okay. his Who do you want to win we, that fight? Which would be better for you in your career? Because you, I assume, want to at some point fight the winner and get the belt. Better to fight a Fury, two younger guys, or fight a more, you know, established, you know, world icon, if you will, in Klitschko. Which is better? I mean, it, for me, it's it's like a either or, but but the choice is like fight the younger guy. I mean, any anywhere I go, I'm gonna get criticized. Whoever I fight, just say if I would have beat if I would have beat Klitschko. This put me in, in the place of fear. If I would have beat Klitschko, people would have criticized. Oh, he was out. He was, he was past his prime. He was too old. Now you got a younger guy to beat him. If I beat Fury, then what? Uh, he's, he's a younger guy. He's a younger guy. What? What would be said? But like, he didn't really have skill in the way. Klitschko was, you know, they were still blaming. So you know, I think I think the best thing would would be Fury. You know, you got you got one. He, he's from England. I feel England has the the best fans in the world. You know, um, they, they support their people. They come to fights from, from, from the start to the end. You know, I love how they gravitate to fighters. I love how they gravitate to boxing, period. So, um, I, you know, if it was between the two, I would love Fury. You've been you going know, back and forth with him, too. I can go, you know, yeah, yeah, most definitely. I would love Klitschko as well, just put him on the resume, uh, uh, you know, because he, he made comments that um, he would love to fight me for the WBC belt because that's a belt that he never had before. And um, I would love to put him on my resume as well, too. So either, either either or for me, you know, either or. Who, I'm the type of champion that I stay ready. I express that many times throughout my career that I stay ready. That's one of the significant and special things about me. I stay ready. So it, it's not a point in time where I have to get ready. And I feel that as a, as a responsibility of a champ, you must stay ready because everybody want what you have. And I feel once I unify the division, they want it want the the, the, the sanctioned body won't have they won't have to sit and and, and wonder. 
where we gonna get our sanction free from? Because I'm a champion. I love to fight. I love to stay active. You know, after a fight, I'm two months ready. I broke my hand. I was two months in. I don't need three, five, six months to prepare for no one. For what? You know, I feel the longest that a guy give me time to prepare, that, that's going to be worse on them because I'm, I'm ready. I'm always in shape. So they won't have to worry about getting the same speed because I'm going to be fighting. Once I get finished with a fight, if I'm not, I don't have nothing broken and I'm not bruised up too bad, hey, let's get another negotiator in. Let's get it. Let's get this money and build my legacy. Yeah, it's, it's refreshing to see an active heavyweight champion like, like Deontay's been. But to the point he just made, here's a champion of the world and he's always ready. And when you're out there right now, there's an opportunity to fight the champion of the world for, you know, to get the most prestigious title in all of boxing. And you're calling around to people that you know have been in training, have had fights scheduled, and you're hearing, well, I'm, you know, yeah, well, I'm in shape, but I'm not mentally prepared to fight for the heavyweight title in six or seven weeks. And, and some of the things we've been hearing the last few days, it's sort of remarkable. So when this man says, you know, I'm always ready, he means it, and, and he's champion of the world. Deontay, heart of hearts. Uh, with the scarcity of heavyweights around today, and we were dealing with just one guy, Klitschko, do you think that, in your assessment, that Tyson Fury just exposed uh, a, a Klitschko that, that really didn't exist, that uh, his opponents were just worse than he was? Because I saw that fight. I thought it was a WWF match. Mm -hmm. uh, Fury was just as more like a, an octopus than anything else, but he still was able to bluff and intimidate and make uh, a, 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 a gunshot. Right. Well, in my honest opinion, I, I just feel this is go back from the from the start of Klitschko career. You know, and man, was still a save Klitschko career. You know, yeah. from the from switching up his whole style of fighting. You know, and um, I feel once Emmanuel passed away, um, he got out of that teaching of, of keeping distance, keeping uh, on blocking right. and stuff like that because, you know, of course he, he was the type of fighter that couldn't really take a punch mm -hmm. and we, we've seen that. And um, getting out of that teaching caused him to fight smaller opponents and what big fighters love, we love a, 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 a shorter opponent because his, he, he started to convert into keeping distance, which he right. still do well, but he started converting from that to, to, to clinching and holding. To, and what that does is wear down the legs and wear down the opponent. Even when they're missing, that, that when you miss, that takes more energy than you land in the punch. Right. So he got so used to that. So when you fight a taller fighter, that can if you if you hit and miss, you can be punished mm -hmm. in, in, in in the same sentence. You know, right. it, it makes it different. So I think that played a lot, a lot of part in it. That um, he took um, that he was able to, to, to clinch and hold. That took away. That was actually took more energy away from him than, than, than he had in the fight. And I think it played a lot of part because I still feel that he has stamina problems as well too. You know, so, it, and another decision, you know, he, he he went wrong with having a 24 inch ring against mm -hmm. a non-puncher. Tyson Fury is not a puncher. My one year old son hit harder than him. He's not a puncher. You know, and why would you make a decision to have a, a big ring, a, a, you know, a boxer, what we call a boxer ring, you know, to run around because that's, a point comes to, he's scared to get hit because he knows that he don't know how durable mm -hmm. that his chin is to can take a punch, you know. Then then having double padding, how long they been having double padding in the ring? Oh. What double pads do, that makes you tired in the ring as well too. So when you, when you have a stiff ring, you're more mobile, you're able to move. And they took away the double padding, which that was good on Fury on behalf because they noticed that. But we want, you know, all these things, like even if the smaller opponents, previous opponents, how long they been doing the double pattern thing, you know? So it's a lot of questions to be answered, mm -hmm. but again, I still think Father Time is at his door as well, too, you know? Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, there, would you be willing to travel for a Fury fight to England? You know, when they, say, when they say heavyweight champion of the world, when they say a world champion, right. I want to exercise every bit of world champion, you know? I, you know, the Olympics prepared me for, you know, different going to different countries battered in, 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 in different territories, you know. I like to be uncomfortable in situations, you know. I, I, I like to to have a challenge, you know. So but so I'm willing to go anywhere in the world to fight. You know, going to different countries, that don't bother me. You know, I, you know that I, I, I'm not fear of, of going to a country, I don't know what the hell they saying, what are they telling me the truth or not, you know, or what are they trying to lead me up to eat this or eat that, you know, it's, you know. <laughs> I'm not scared about that, you know. I go anywhere in the world and fight. You know, I'm comfortable in my style and my ability of what I'm capable of doing. I feel like I'm, 
I, I, I feel like this is what I was, this is my calling. This is what I was meant to do. And any man stepping in that ring, they're going to go. I you, promise, I don't care who it is. You may be in Russia to fight for It don't matter. I'd have been in Russia before. I'd have been in front of a, a stadium full of Russians in the Olympics where when you come out there, the only thing is, <laughs> full of drunk Russians. And, you know, that's nothing. That's nothing to me. I didn't get free of that because at the end of the day, all those people, they can't fight for this guy that's been getting free. When will that fight be? You're fighting January. Uh, well, is it, well, actually, we, you know, we want it, we want it, we, we, my thing, it, it, since we own Alexander for backing, you know, this fight is supposed to be, he's supposed to be, we want him for this one. My thing is, you fought Mike Perez one round. Why are you not ready? Why the hell you take another fight to fight Morris Watt to prepare for me? Me and him, two different styles. Only thing about it, we got height. Okay, other than that, two different styles. Slow guy, don't hit hard, you know, he's doable, got a nice chin, of course. But, you know, you're supposed to be ready. After that fight, it's all about Deontay Wilder. There shouldn't be nothing else. So now when this fight come about, oh, we need, they go to the council, we need more time, we're not ready. So what, what how you need six, six months to prepare for me? For what? You don't need that much. Time. If y'all confident in what y'all say, y'all talking about y'all got all this money, we gonna bring it this and this, bring it to a location, that ain't gonna do nothing for him. I don't care about going to Russia. It's the only thing, I, it's going to be cold sure enough, I hate to cold, but that's about it. That ain't going to stop him, that ain't going to save him from getting his ass whooping, I'm going to get to him. My, my goal is to unify the division and bring him back to America, and that's what I'm going to do. That's my mission, and that's my goal, and that's what I'm going to do. No matter what man getting, I don't care how many months, they can have a year to train for me. That ain't going to do them nothing. No justice, and I promise you that. And anybody against that, I like to prove them wrong. Any, you know, you're gonna have critics, you're gonna have people that, that disagree, you're gonna have people talk about opponents, you're gonna, that's part of it, that's part of life. You know, that's part of boxing, that's part of anything that any man being successful, you're gonna have critics, what they say is, if you ain't, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. And that's how it is. On that note, how many times do you wanna fight in 2016? As much time as possible. That's why I wanna unify the division. So once I, you know, once I be the undisputed champion, I have mentors left and right. You know, like I said, if I ain't, if I, if I don't break nothing and I ain't injured, hey, let's get another contract in the, in, in the lineup. Let's go. Where we gotta go? I want to make history. I want to be known for that guy that 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 fought crazy times like back in the day. I think the last, you know, when this fight happens, January the 16th, you know. Lenny Snoop was the, the last one to, to fight consecutive times, be so after like that. And I want to pass that, you know. If I can get six times a year, let's do it. You know, I'm young, man. I'm still, I'm just, I'm 30 years young, man. And, you know, I started this sport very late in boxing. I don't take too much uh, punishment in the ring. Let, let's get it on. You know, I'm, I'm sick and tired of fighters saying that what we have done, my team have done, you know, Deontay Wilder's not afraid of no man. Only man I fear is God. I'm a God fear man. Other than that, I don't fear a man. I actually I'm in love with this sport. I love to get in the ring. I love to get in, the, in, in front of the crowd full of full of fans, whether they're against me or with me. I love to travel. I love this. I love. I'm in love with this. And when you're in love with it, you don't want to stop doing it.